Ladies and gentlemen of video show land, what a star we have for you today. I mean, we've had stars and we've had stars, but this is a star and three quarters. Ladies and gentlemen, that famous bum on legs. <laughs> Rod Stewart. It's Jay's TV, and on today's video, we're going to be looking at Adrian Paul. Now, he is the dude who played Connor McLeod in the Highlander TV show. As you know from a previous video I made last year, Henry Cavill is about to step into those possible Connor McLeod shoes. But this is a really great video that was brought to my attention from Ryan Kennel at RK Outpost. So I thought I'll give you my reaction to what. Adrian Paul addresses about diversity in films today, entertainment generally. So without further ado, Mr. Paul, take it away, sir. Today is a beautiful day. I'm just on the way to a new job. Um, so Gonzalo Amieda actually asked me what I thought about um, all this diversity in film. You know, I mean, the, the female James Bond and films like The Eternals or the series like The Eternals. <laughs> and there's a lot of diversity and the the awakening era that we're in. The now, awakening. With having females and having um, uh, various uh, groups being cast in different roles. The way I look at it is, I think it's a great thing, but I also think it's gone too far one way at the moment. It's always going to be like that whenever you have a, a movement that comes out and is very current, that it's everybody wants to step on the bandwagon. I think the thing is, characters in films have to be written for the characters that they are, you know, or the people that they are. A, a diverse type of movie should be written for that. It can be, you know, it's a it's a Caucasian white guy of forty five, and then suddenly you get a. Uh, an Asian of uh, 62 being put into that role because <laughs> it fits the diversity um, category. Yeah, I think you have box. to really look at it and write those roles for that particular type of group. Uh, and I think, you know, there's, um, there's a plethora of stories out there uh, f for uh, the diverse, diversity um, groups that are, are now coming to the forefront, as well as women in, in movies. There are a lot of female roles. Female James Bond... <sighs> I don't know about that. I, I'm I'm on the fence, and, I, and I'm not being um, one-sided on it. I think it was written for a male. And when you come, I actually uh, had a security um, series that I was looking at, a reality series, and I met with various bodyguards, etc. And they said, the thing is, when you have a guy that's 300 pounds or 250 pounds full of muscle and pushing through a secure security detail, it's really hard to stop that person if you're a female of only 150 or 200 pounds, even 200 pounds. So you're looking at something that is a different, um, it's trying to put a square peg into a round hole, and I'm not sure that works. <laughs> Again, I might be mistaken, but I think uh, we should really sort of look at what fits. You know, make sure that you're going to, you know, you're not going to build a canoe to go across the ocean. You want to build, build a big ship so you're safe. An right? armada. Yes. <laughs> now, what do you guys think? That's kind of my thought. But anyway. Now, this guy, I love Adrian Paul. He's awesome. I've subscribed to his channel because the guy had a very sensible take in his video. James Bond, a dude, written by a dude called Ian Fleming. He describes Bond as a man. So why on earth would you want to gender, maybe possibly race swap him in the future because of the diversity? You just can't do that. It doesn't make sense. It's like taking the character of T'Challa and making him a white dude. How do you think that's going to go down? Of course, it's going to go down horribly, like a lead balloon. As Paul mentions here, he talks about the round peg and the square hole. You just can't do that with a character. Now, if you were going to have a female version of Bond, I've said it before, and I will say it again, Rebecca Ferguson from the Mission Impossible films as fan favorite. Elsa Faust, she is fantastic. I think she's actually more popular than Tom Cruise's character of Ethan Hunt. Definitely not Cockney rhyming slang. But going back further to what Paul said here about a 300 pound 
a person who weighs and who steamrolls a security detail. How is a woman who weighs about 150 pounds? And yeah, I'm talking to you, Jessica Chastain and the 355, that female triumphant action movie at the beginning of this year. Pew, 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 pew. Ooh, let me flick my wrist at you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Stop. Oh, you big, bad, horrible man. <laughs> So that's never gonna work, is it? Now, if you saw the Jeff Speakman movie, Perfect Weapon, which is an amazing film, a great martial arts film, there's a scene towards the end where he's facing off with like a 350 pound dude, and the only way Speakman can take him down is to target his weak spots. In this case, the bad guy has very bad knees. So that's possibly one way you can do it, but in the real life situation, you probably can't do that. I used to do security back in the late 80s, early noughties, with a famous Hollywood-themed restaurant in London. So I picked up a few tricks there. I'm obviously rusty now, wouldn't know what to do unless I was retrained. But uh, what Adrian Paul says here about, yeah, you can have diversity in films. Of course you can. But, and I, and I had this conversation with a friend of mine just last week that it feels like a political movement. He calls it a movement here. Some people will say it's a bowel movement, which I probably wouldn't do too much disagree with, but it is a movement that doesn't know when to slam the brakes. It's Hollywood getting very carried away. It's Hollywood telling you, oh, people like Sarah Connor or um, Ellen Ripley did not exist before. It is just about what we're doing now, which makes no sense whatsoever. But you can still have the diversity. You can still have certain roles catered for certain people. Ed Screen, I know he was meant to be the original choice for the Hellboy reboot, and he was eventually replaced by Daniel Day Kim because fans got into an outrage that they've ethnically swapped the character around. And in the end, the film bombed. Would it have made a difference if Ed Screen was in there? Probably not. But also, this reminds me of the early 90s where they were talking about an Akira live action movie. And the name that came to people's minds was Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he would have been brilliant. It doesn't matter that the dude is white. The fact is, if they had made that film and if it had become a massive hit, it would have been down to the star power of DiCaprio. Not the fact he's a white dude. The fact is, he's just correct for that particular choice of character. But we'll never see that now because it's gone too far into development hell and out of it again. So what is the point? But Adrian Paul, I love this guy's take on a diversity in films and they're pushing it so, like the point is now that it's become such a movement that the more Hollywood pushes this, the more people like me, you know, true fans, will back away and just go back and watch the good old stuff that they made before. Again, Matthew Marsden, definitely an advocate for just making it a proper film. Don't put ideology or politics into it. So folks, if you were not aware of Adrian Paul's channel, make sure you go to experience the, ex <laughs> make sure you go and subscribe to the Sword Experience. I think that's what it's actually called. Yes, and before I actually do sign up folks, there was a comment here by Chris Fields that I wanted to highlight here. Yeah, absolutely agree. And I remember growing up on Red Sonia as Brigitte Nielsen, uh, Sarah Connor from The Terminator. I want your cars, your clothes, and your boots. That's obviously Arnie saying it, not Sarah Connor. Though Sarah Connor as a Terminator would be quite funny. Um, then of course Valeria from Conan, uh, Ripley from Alien. I already mentioned her. Princess Leia, Xena, warrior princess who can hurt you where nowhere else there is to hurt you with that big stick of hers. So I'm not really sure why it's being said that the strong female main characters are a new thing. Precisely my point. Far Eastern Asian action movies had strong female leads in them. I can think of Michelle Yeoh in a police story film with Jackie Chan, and there's many more. In fact, I would say that Asian cinema 
pioneered the action female as far back as the 1970s. And then again, you probably would have Hollywood movies that were, I think the Russ Mayer films had action females in them too, um, although they were doing other naughty things in there. So I might be wrong in that respect, but really when it was taken seriously, uh, China or the Far Eastern Asian film industry took that much more seriously in the 70s. But I could be wrong on that part. But folks, if you enjoyed this video today, make sure you give it a like. Make sure you share. And most of all, do subscribe because it helps the algorithm out. And if I were you, I would see me on my next video. In the end, there can be only one. May it be Duncan McLeod, the Highlander. Like and subscribe or get your nuts Krogan crushed with Jason King.